Hello traders, it is Friday, April 24th, and we are halfway through the trading session today. The market's really not giving us a whole lot to look at. Early this morning, I could see the selling yesterday. This is a price action off of the high yesterday. A lot of negative price action. This morning, we had this gap higher. I mentioned to everyone before the open that we're likely to test the support level right here before we see any decent kind of bounce. Follow through selling from yesterday. It's exactly what happened. We had a nice little play in here on some long positions, found stocks with relative strength on that pullback, and we were able to make money, go to the sidelines. We had another nice little opportunity right here. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six tests of this support level, and now we've got a nice little rally here. I believe that this low of the day is going to hold. I'm waiting for a pullback and perhaps another window of opportunity to trade from the long side this afternoon. I've been able to find better price action on my longs than I have been on my shorts. So I'm going to be day trading from the long side, but I got to tell you with each passing day, I'm getting more and more bearish. I'm starting to see some warning signs. I think we're going to have some credit issues because we are pushing back the shutdown date and pushing it back. Wisconsin, mid-May, late May, Illinois, we pushed our date back to the beginning of June. So we're going to continue to extend the lockdown. New York extended their lockdown. Trump is saying that he feels that any kind of reopening should be very, very gradual. So he's being super cautious. In fact, he's been making some remarks on Georgia's reopening tomorrow and saying that he thinks that it's premature. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said that he doesn't think the economy is going to be back in recovery until late August, early September. Whoa, that is a very long timetable. We've had six point some trillion dollars worth of federal stimulus and we aren't even out of the gate yet and most of that money is used up. I think that we're really going to be stretching our credit limits right now. And we did get another tranche of small business loans approved by the House yesterday. $488 billion from what I'm hearing. It's rumored that banks are saying that most of that money has already been spoken for. So it's going to be gone before we even know it. Which in essence, that's a transfer payment between the government and workers businesses are just the middleman so government is trying to do everything they can to get people back on the job but we've got so much debt it's absolutely ballooned and we're not alone this is happening globally that it's going to raise some credit issues in fact i'm starting to see overnight repo spreads in europe expand that's not a good sign for liquidity reasons and the ecb is trying to head that off how by accepting junk bonds as collateral from its banks they are taking all of that crappy risk so this is not a good situation and unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it every country is involved in cross currency swaps so we're all guaranteeing each other's currencies because we know if one fails we all fail this is a global economic event it's not good and every day that this shutdown gets extended and the recovery gets pushed back the chances for a credit crisis increase so on a very short-term basis i believe that the market's going to continue to push a little bit higher the bid is going to remain firm while mega cap tech stocks report earnings next week everything climaxes we've got lots and lots of earnings coming out next week but google amazon microsoft facebook big companies, Apple. The market tends to hold its bid really well before these giants report earnings because they tend to post really good numbers and everything is up, you know, it's it's rosy picture, smooth sailing ahead, but sellers know to hold off on selling until they report earnings and I believe that the air will get let out of the balloon in the next 10 days and we're going to start to see some increased selling pressure Energy stocks, retail, they tend to be towards the end of earnings season. Plus, we're not getting any clarity from the corporations. Many of them, like Intel, are yanking their guidance. The earnings that we're seeing for Q1 realize that the shutdown didn't happen until the last, very last part of Q1. So a lot of that's not even reflected in the numbers that we're seeing. 
They have no clarity. They don't know when the shutdown's going to end. They don't know how fast the recovery is going to be. Consumers are going to hold back on their spending until they know that their job is secure. These issues all have to play out in the course of the next few months. And I think that this recovery, it's going to be long and it's going to be hard. And coronavirus has shown that it's very, very resilient. We're still seeing new cases pop up around the world. So uh, this is going to be a longer term problem. Let's go into that daily chart. And I'm going to show you the resistance level on the SPY. We've got the 200 day and 100 day moving averages converging around SPY 300. I don't think we get anywhere near that. I believe that the 100 week moving average at 288, which was my first target, beautiful target, took profits on my SPY long up there. That's looking pretty dang good right now. If we get back up to that level, I'm going to be trying to sell SPY, a half position at 287.50. I'm going to hold off on the other half until earnings season plays out a little bit more and until I have technical confirmation that the market's ready to roll over. But I believe we're going to see another wave of selling because this recovery is not going to be happening as fast as everyone would like. And that's a problem from a credit standpoint. So I'm getting more and more bearish here. Given my market bias, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you some stocks that I like and some that I don't like. First, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take a look at FWONK. That was a stock that I mentioned yesterday that would be good for day trading. Every day I'm going to try and highlight the stocks, recap them from the day before. That'll give you an idea of the performance. So when I did the video yesterday, we had this surge higher right in here. Everything looked fantastic, but the stock rolled over. There was no opportunity to trade it again from the long side because it lost its relative strike. If I put up the 1 OSI indicator, it'll become blatantly obvious with the orange line below zero. There's no opportunity for us. On a swing basis, I'd mentioned it had to be above 28.50, which is right in here, for us to have an overnight swing trading opportunity. Didn't happen. Not a good overnight long. Go into that daily chart. I'll show you the resistance level right here at 28.50 that we were looking at. The stock was way up here, mind you, when I did the video. We needed that to hold. It didn't. So, not a good swing trade. Don't want to hold it overnight. If it gets through that level again, yes, maybe. But we also took a look at Netflix, and that stock was putting in a nice bullish engulfing pattern. It pulled back a little bit yesterday with the market, but we're looking to sell a bullish put spread down here at the 300 level. Actually, I think we're somewhere around the 290 level. In any case, I like this breakout here. I think this breakout holds. So that position should be good. We've got some long tails under body, post earnings. Love everything about it. Lots of new subscribers. The longer coronavirus persists, the better it is for Netflix. So I still do like that uh, bullish put spread that we put on yesterday. So let's go in and take a look at a couple of stocks that I like bullish and bearish today. Then we're going to see if we can find some opportunities. We'll also take one final look at the market. Going to put a five-minute chart up here. This allows us to constantly track what's going on in the market. So again, nice little uptrend here, major multiple support here, looking for a little bit of pullback. You can see the 1OP indicator starting to top out a little bit. We're trapped in this range today. Nothing going to happen. I need that pullback going into the last hour of trading because that's going to help me reveal relative strength and I'll be looking for some lotto plays. It's what I like to do Friday afternoon. I like buying strong stocks, calls on them, stocks that are able to get through the strike price but they're just out of the money. I can buy those options for sometimes a dime with only 15 or 20 minutes left of trading. If I get that strong push into the close, the stock goes through the strike price and the options have to trade at parity so the market makers can't play any games with me. Buy them for a dime, sell them for 20, 30, 40 cents. We try and do this every week. We haven't been able to do that strategy for a long time because the option bid ask spreads have been so wide and because option implied volatilities have been so high. But conditions are improving for this play. The only thing missing right now is we don't have a strong market tailwind. So if I do a lotto trade today, it's going to be very small size and I need to have the right stock. I've got one in mind that looks like it's setting up now, but we're still quite a ways from the close. So let's go in. Let's take a look at some stocks that I like. Uh, one that's on the list, 
And mind you, I am longer term bearish. So I'm going to focus on the bearish stocks first. BA, I think Boeing sets up very nicely for a short. But if I hover over the E, you're going to see that the earnings date is 4 29. So they report earnings next week. We can't swing trade this. We're too close to earnings. You could try an over the weekend play, but we can't do any option plays because earnings are upon us. But you can see this nice steady downtrend. And there was a little bit of a wedge formation right in here. So if you connect these lows, connect these highs, you can see we're down through the lower end of that uptrend line. Boeing is going to produce half as many Dreamliner planes next year. They're cutting their production. That is not a good sign. Take a look at that M5 chart. Yes, a lot of relative weakness happening right in here. I think the stock continues to sell off. So I like this as a short today. I like holding it over the weekend short. And it could even make a good short Monday morning if you get a little bit of a bounce Wait for that bounce to stall and then look for an opportunity to short it. So uh, Boeing, I think, sets up really well for a short LVS. Different story. We got a chance to maybe do a swing trade on this. So LVS, why so bearish, Pete? What's wrong? Well, gambling is going to recover very, very slowly. Macau is starting to get back on its feet. That's why we got a little bit of a pop after the earnings announcement. But the stock is still very, very soft. And we're still seeing coronavirus globally. They've got properties in Singapore. So I think that they're going to continue to struggle. You can see this downward sloping trend line right here. We want to be up, it, up above it when we're selling a bearish call spread. But I think this stock sets up well for it. We're after earnings. So earnings just announced two days ago. I'm going to bring up the Option chain, going to see what we can do. We can go out in time a little bit. Let's try and keep this as close as we can. So we're going to go out to the May 8th expiration, which basically puts us about two weeks from expiration. We're going to try and key off of that $50 resistance level. That's that tall tail right there that I'm pointing at on the right, right there. So we're going to sell the $50 call. We're going to buy the $51 call. And when I have $1 between the strike prices, I like to get a 20 cent credit. That represents a 25% return on that investment. You can see that that spread's currently bid. Six cents offered at 16. I want to get 20 cents for it. So that's the trade. Click submit, boom, done, entered. So we got to have the stock rally in order to get that price. We're not going to get it right here, right now. So. Watch for any kind of little rally in the stock in the next day or two. See if you can get that spread off. We've still got a couple of weeks till expiration, so get a little bit of pop in it. Should be able to get that spread done. I see that there's major resistance here, and I feel that the market has a chance to soften up as well and sell off after 10 days. So I like that as a bearish play. Let's take a look at some possible bullish plays again. I think that you need to keep these very, very, very short term. KLAC, I love this breakout through the horizontal resistance level. I love the fact that it's above the 100-day moving average. It's also above that 200-day moving average. So take a look at that five-minute chart. And here we're going to take these down because I want to have a clean shot at looking at what's going on with the market. You can see a little bit of a bounce here. We're trying to test that high. That's actually the resistance level right there at about 280.80. So let's keep an eye on that. I'm going to actually drop an alert line. I'll make it a little bit easier for us to watch. And there's our alert line. So let's go back to KLAC. You can see how the stock has had a nice surge higher, starting to find some support here. May want to move higher. I like the fact that it's through the high of the day. And this stock tends to be a little choppy. When you see price action like this, what does it mean? It means wait, be patient, buy dips. So you don't want to buy breakouts because there's a good chance that the stock's going to come back a little bit for you. It's going to give you another chance to get in. But I do like the strength. I like the fact that it's above the 100-day moving average. If you are a day trader, I believe that you can sell a bullish put spread expiring May 1 below that 200-day moving average perhaps keying off of the 155 level, sell the 155, 152.50, 
uh, bullish put spread, something along those lines. CRWD, I think that's another stock that sets up well. You can see the big breakout that we had here through horizontal resistance. Long green candle today, put up that M5 chart. Nice, full head of steam. This is the type of consistency that we want to see. When you see a stock that does this, rally, pullback, rally, pullback, what does that tell you? That tells you that you don't buy up here, okay? You've got to set some alerts and try and catch one of these dips. Well, how the heck am I supposed to do that? Well, you click the alert line. You pick a point that you think you'd be an interested buyer at. So now, if the stock pulls back and it breaches that line right there, I'm going to get an alert. Does that mean I go in and buy right away? No. Then, I wait for that pullback to come in and I start setting some alerts above the price target so that when it resumes that longer term trend I get notified. That's how we use alert lines to deliver trades to us on a silver platter and those alerts come up right in the middle of the screen. So CRWD I also like on a day trading basis on a swing trading basis I don't like it because it's already moved so high today that it would need to pull back and on any pullback, any dip. You come in Monday morning, you turn on your screen, CRWD is giving back some of its gains. Okay, yes, if it can hold half of this long green candle right around that, uh, call it 71 price level, $71 price level, and you start to see it firm up and the market's starting to move higher, yep, Monday morning, I think that makes a nice candidate for a day trade. I am really paring back all of my risk on my longs on a longer term basis. I don't like what I'm seeing in the market. So I can't say that strongly enough. So I've given you a couple of longs. I've given you a couple of shorts. Let's go in, see if we can find some charts that look good. And right now we had a little bit of a market rally in here. We're going to go in because I do like the market today. I'm going to use my heavy buying search. And let's see what we've got going on here. BYND, we made some really nice money on early today. That's a one-minute chart. I want to be in a five-minute chart. Five-minute basis, you can see it held the opening gap higher, found support above it, starting to rally above this downward sloping trend line. Yes, BYND firming up nicely. Market was down early today, had this long green bar closing on its high. I was able to buy in here and sell it for a 70 cent profit. It's a really nice trade. W is another one that I got on, but I got out of that trade. I had gotten in the trade. I liked everything that I saw. And then I was in here and the price action started to stall out. And I was like, eh, you know, I don't want to be buying the high when I've got tails above body in the market, not knowing what it's going to do. So I scratched the trade. And of course, whoosh, after that, it runs like mad. But W on a daily basis, actually looking pretty dang good. You can see this major breakout on a horizontal basis. I'm not really, uh, you know, that gangbuster on the stock itself, but <clears throat> excuse me, the price action has been very, very good. I'm going to show you another stock that uh, I think will perform well, and it's exactly the kind of pattern that you should be looking for. You can see I've got an alert line here. I've been in the stock today. SYY, I think this works really well for a swing trade, could set up well for a lotto trade today, but this is the type of price action I want to see. Nice, tight tight, tight. Made money on this, made great money on this today. SYY, they service restaurants. So as economies, states start to open up, restaurants will start to open. They probably got a lot of supplies that they need to replenish. SYY will be one of the first benefactors for that. I think that's why you're starting to see some strength in it. So I like it. I think that sets up well for a swing trade also. So now we're going to keep clicking through and seeing what else we can find. Uh, Target has been excellent today. You can see this is an upward sloping channel. So you want to try and buy dips that come up along this lower trend line. And you'll probably have to buy it just a little bit above it, but you can double or click there and then you can click there. Now you've got your upward sloping trend line. Anything that comes back in here is probably going to be a good buying opportunity. This stock has nice relative strength today. INO, that one's been a nice strong one all day. Nice, tight, strong price action. Go to the daily. You can see it's had a lot of upside potential and it's starting to 
rocket ship again here. So INO, also possible play. eBay was very strong today. Nice breakout here through horizontal resistance. Been able to hold those gains. M5, five-minute chart. Yes, almost a cup and handle type formation. There's your lip. Doesn't make big moves, so it would not be my favorite for a lotto play. But if the options are really cheap, like a couple of pennies, you might be able to play something... Uh, that's already across the $39 price level, so uh, you'd need a $39.50 perhaps would come into play. So that looks pretty good. That was on the heavy buying. We're searching for volume plays. That's another criteria that I use for my lottos. I look for 15-minute and 5-minute volume spikes, and I also use ADX. Just going to see what else we got coming through here. ROST. ALGN, let's go back to that ROST. Choppy, choppy stock. I do actually like this on the bearish side. Longer term, I am bearish retail. Not seeing anything there. I'm looking for really consistent price action, and I'm not seeing it. And I'm so, Pete, would you buy this? Here's a nice stock. Look, it's come down. It's starting to find some support. It's starting to bounce. It's through horizontal resistance. I don't like buying these as much as I like buying stocks that are through the prior day's high and have that 45-degree angle upwards and buying dips on those stocks. I prefer those to stocks that have been pounded and that are bouncing because my upside is relatively limited on these plays, and I'm ever watchful that the stock could instantly reverse and have the rug yanked out from under me. So I'm not really into these for my bullish plays. The exception would be on an earnings announcement. Oh, let me show you that too. I should show you that. Look at that. That's nice. Long green candles, consecutive through the high of the day. Look at that volume right there. Yes, DGX looks good. Go into the daily chart. Oh yeah. Getting through the 100-day and 200-day moving average. Yeah, absolutely. I think DGX is going to set up well for a day trade. BLUE, what's that doing? A little bit of a compression here, trying to get going. Got some horizontal resistance. Wouldn't be my favorite. So, yes, I think that looked really good. DGX. See, we found it just that fast. Didn't take us long at all. Middle of the day, not much going on. Take a look at Bull Run. One of my favorite searches for lotto trades. And we're going to go in, and we're just looking for price action, consistency, nice, tight, move, higher. Now, this will all change between now and the close also. So just because something looks good now doesn't mean that it's going to look good two hours from now. But that's the process. And let's see what we've got here. Uh, Yelp, you know, very, very choppy stock. But if I didn't have all of this chop previously, but I had this type of price action right here, then I would be much more interested in it. But a stock like this could reverse at any time. So you have to be very careful with those. NTAP is one that I've been in today. I kind of like this. I'd like to see it get through that horizontal resistance. And you see this upward sloping trend line. That's pretty good. So what do I do with a stock like that? SPY just got through a resistance level right there. That was our alert that we set while I was uh, doing the video. Click GTC. Click on the tap, top of that bar. So let's say that I'm interested in NTAP as a swing trade longer term. I just dropped the GTC line right here. If it gets through that horizontal resistance, I want to know about it because that would be a nice formation. If you use these alerts and you take a little bit of time to set them, you're going to have trades delivered to you on a silver platter. So one more look at the market. I've given you some really good longs and shorts to take a look at. And we can see how the market is trying to get up to this resistance level right here, that uh, 280, 80 price level. I'm not looking for a big breakout this afternoon. I think this is nice, but I need that little dip in the last half hour of trading to set me up for some of the longs that I like. And again, SYY has the type of price action that I'm going to be looking for. I don't have to have it all day long, but I have to have it 
heading into the close. I need to see something along this line that tells me that there's a lot of momentum behind it and I want to see the volume. Right now, I'm not seeing that volume here. It's just floating higher. So if you have those ingredients, you've got a really good candidate for a lotto trade. Buy them for pennies. It's a very low risk strategy because you're not spending a lot on the options and they have a chance to double or triple. Thanks so much. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to turn on uh, your notifications. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of these videos. I promise you they'll be loaded with education. I'll always have some really good trade ideas for you as well. I may have uh, the gumption to do a Sunday night video. I'll have to see. If not, I'll see you Monday morning. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.